Well, we just had a wedding here this week, so all the old chairs are put away. But uh, this is the old building. <clears throat> it's amazing when you look at the rafter system and how they built this big hall. It, a lot of it came from the halls they had a uh, like a big uh, shop on town line there. That's just you know a little bit away from us, and they had a lumber and all that stuff. And well, all this lumber, a lot of it came from there. And, uh, it's housed plays, uh, you know, all sorts over the years, and political speakers, musicians, you know, anything that you can think of. Uh, you know, that little stage has been a big part of uh, this little area up here on the range. Um, musicians, Viola Turpin was a big, you know, hit back in the day, and she would just draw crowds that would be two or three days long to enjoy an event or something. They'd have to do a morning show and an evening show just to accommodate all the people that wanted to come see her. And it, you know, it was just amazing when you look at the amount of people that you know, came here to enjoy the place back in its heyday. And then, you know, shortly later, the uh, McCarthy era came about and you know, that's when the park's decline really kind of hit. You know, you had the Bureau kind of uh, harassing the park back in the day. And, Kind of a kind of a shameful time, you know. I think in you know political history and the events that conspired did what they did. I suppose you know just push people away from these sort of things. And there was a lot of I mean little co-ops up in the range and things like that that kind of dismantled over you know due to that era and everything that was going on. The beautiful lake. When they acquired this back in uh, 1929, the property. Um, the company they bought it from, I believe it was a logging company, they had, didn't have it on their maps that there was a lake on the, the property, so when they sold it, they got it for pennies on the dollar, what they would have actually had to pay. They basically, they wanted to find a new place. They wanted to get away from the city. They wanted to have a place that they could call their own. Uh, some place, anywhere, you know, would be great, basically, even if it was a field in a bar, you know, in a big farm field somewhere, but... You know, they wanted something that they could create kind of a venue for, you know, everybody. And it, it was strictly Finnish when it was initially uh, created. All the way up till 19, or 1929, it was strictly Finnish. Kind of challenging to have a get together of a bunch of Finns in an area and not have the public, you know, obviously take notice and, you know, you know and Finns were really treated poorly back in the day, honestly. I mean, it, you know, you look at the signs, I mean, there was literally signs on buildings that said, you know, no Indians or Finns allowed or whatever. Yeah, it used to be, a, one, it was all open, this hole underneath was open at one time. You could drive your truck right to the lake or whatever, unload, or, you know, people would be sitting underneath congregating. And then they added the downstairs level. And this actually at one point was a bunkhouse, or boathouse, either way, they stored boats in it, but they used it as a bunkhouse. So miners would come up here and there's a big boom in the 70s, They'd have between 20 or 30 people bunking in, you know, the bunks here and just stay it overnight, you know, that were working in the mines or whatnot, and they'd use the kitchen and this, that, and everything else, and enjoy it. And Originally when they acquired this, it came with 160 acres surrounding the lake, too, which was kind of neat. And the lake's a beautiful spring-fed lake. It's a 52-acre lake. It's 35 feet deep, and they didn't allow any gas motors on it or anything like that. Um, you know, they just kept it a nat you know natural, beautiful little lake. And they had a children's camp across the lake where they'd ship the kids off to, where they had a nurse's cabin and a screen room and a you know root cellar and a beach for the kids, and they even had a baseball field over there. And um, I mean, they really had it kind of unique, you know, just kind of set up so that way the parents could enjoy themselves and the kids would be over there and, you know, learning about something or enjoying the day.